Nice. What's up, guys? I'm Random Frank P. And today we have one of my thockiest keyboard builds yet with this resin and ceramic beauty. So kicking this off, we'll go through the whole build process, take it pretty chill for you guys today, but I am definitely pumped for this because I've never worked with such unique materials in a keyboard before. I saw these ceramic keycaps on Instagram. I hit up the maker, Sarah Keys, and they sent out their brand new ceramic keycap set. So I knew I wanted to build this one to be unlike anything I've done before. I think the end result really does accomplish that. Now the case I'll be using, I picked up from Drop for just $45. This is a resin 60% case from NPKC. They make them in a bunch of different colors, but I'm really digging this deep navy colorway, almost like an indigo color in real life. And as you can see with the mix of resin and whatever that sort of glitterly swirl stuff is mixed in, it just looks really cool. And since it's resin, not only will it provide our build with a really nice sound profile, but the material also allows for some external glow that'll be provided from the RGB PCB that we'll be using coming up in just a bit. But man, such a nice look, I think. So when it came towards finalizing what key switch I wanted to use, I was very undecided because I've never worked with anything like these two materials before with the resin and ceramics. I really wanted to find the perfect key switch here. I personally narrowed it down to three that I thought would be the best. That's the Gazoo Boba LTs or the linear thock versions. These are lubed by lube switches, shout out to them. And also from lube switches, they supplied their um, Sangria switches, which are a really nice linear switch. And then also since I have a bunch of them, I wanted to try out Aqua King switches. I loaded the keyboard up, divided it into thirds, and it sort of narrowed it down on its own. The Aqua Kings didn't have a really nice sound profile here. Don't worry, I'll do a sound comparison later on in the video. But since I was then torn between the Bobas and the Sangrias, I decided, you know what, I'll toss it to our Discord channel. They can then vote on which they think sounds the best. And uh, as you can see, overwhelming response was A, which was the Boba LTs. So we're gonna go with those. Again, you'll hear a sound test and a full comparison coming up soon. So with that out of the way, now it's time for some mods. And as a tray mount unit like this, I wanted to give it more of a softer gasket mount feel. So I went with the O-ring mod. I stacked three little O-rings on each of the mounts. I did just keep two on both the left and rightmost side screws because it buds right up against the side of the case. And also, again, just because of the unique materials here, I didn't want to deaden any of the sound profile. So instead of using something like foam or silicone, I went with the trusty polyfill method. I ripped it up sparingly just to fill some of the gaps in this area underneath our PCB, because again, I don't want to deaden the sound. Now for our PCB, I'm just going to be reusing the DZ60 RGB that I used a few years ago for my grade 600 build. It's, you know, a simple 60% PCB, got RGB. I've already modded it in a sense where I have the Band-Aid mod on the stabilizers to quiet it. And for the stabilizers, I'll be using the Everglide V2 screw-ins. These are also from a previous build, so they're already pre-lubed. And I have applied the Holy mod on the inside as well. So these are practically going to make zero extra noise or rattling. So I don't want to take away from the overall acoustics of the ceramic and resin. Now with assembly pretty much wrapping up, there are a few other things I wanted to mention here. With the O-ring mod, since I have the three on more of the center post, that's just going to give it an extra sort of bouncing layer, again, to sort of emulate that uh, gasket mount feel. But also when it comes to screws, I didn't want to over tighten it at all. So I screwed it just so it would start to secure. Again, it's just going to give it more of a bouncing feel. And I also left these center two posts unscrewed. And I always prefer that softer feel like gasket mount has. So this really does a good job of emulating that, like I said. I'm also going with a white palm plate because again, the palm material is really gonna give a nice sound profile to complement not only our switches, but the keycaps and the resin case. But for our Gazoo Boba LTs, this batch is from one of their first production runs. So we do have the purple stem to complement our case and BCB, even though the color is useless here. The stem also has a longer center post, which is gonna give it that thockier profile. They're a five pin switch with a 65 gram spring. So again, a bit heavier for a linear switch, but that's gonna to be to combat the overall heavier keycaps. And these are actually very slightly factory lubed, but like I said, I sent these out to lube switches and they hooked me up with a proper lube job here. And now for the real star of the show, the ceramic keycaps from Seraki. I have never used anything like this with this material. And the best way I can describe it is it kind of feels like 
dice. If you have like multiple dice in your hands, you know, just that overall feel where it's just so unique. It's glassy, it's on the heavier side. It's such a different feel and texture than anything I've used in the past. I went with the blank white set here, as you can see, which does have this, you know, glossy reflection naturally on the ceramic finish. I think it makes the navy resin case pop even more. But what's really cool is on their site, they are selling these not only blank or with the characters printed on them, but in a ton of different colors and glazes as well. So you could really customize these and get them to how you want to look for your final keyboard build, which is Really cool to see. I figured they would have very limited production on what the colors would be, but they've got a ton. So definitely pretty cool. Now, obviously the keys are also heavier than a plastic keycap. Uh, they weigh 3.5 grams each. Then each modifier key weighs an increased weight as well. However, the space bar on this unit weighs 32 grams. So obviously with a lighter switch, uh, they're gonna bottom out a lot easier and faster just because of the weight However, they did say on the final production units, they cut down the space bar nearly in half to just 17 grams. But do keep in mind, mine is the first edition here, so it is gonna be heavier. That'll be reflected in the sound test. Then once it's plugged in with our PCB, having the RGB, you can see the subtle glow around and through the keycap, because even though these are ceramic, you know, it's like an opaque glass, pretty much. I always keep RGB at a static color, but the PCB has a ton of different RGB effects, but I like keeping it a static deep blue, almost purple color to highlight that deep navy resin case. It makes it just pop a bit more visually, especially when all the lights in the room are turned off. It has this really nice blue glow overall. And honestly, as a final result, I just love how the resin and ceramic complement each other here with such a nice pop of color and contrast. Now we're gonna do the sound test with our Boba LTs, but right after that, I'm also gonna do a key switch comparison so you could hear how they all sound with different switches. But we have some tactiles in the Pulsar black hole switches, as well as tactile mint chocolate chips. We also then have Gateron black ink. These are the original V1s, as well as the Novel Keys cream switches, and then some Aqua King switches, as well as the newer Sangria switches. Just so you can hear a difference in all the sound profiles. So now we'll do a sound test with our lubed Gazoo Boba LTs. Again, a resin case, palm plate, and ceramic keycaps. And keep in mind that note I said about the heavier space bar. All right, so personally, I am loving how deep this keyboard sounds. And again, with the ceramic keycaps, resin case, and those Gazoo LT Boba switches, it does provide a very deep thock, I feel. And the sound tests are always hard to fully portray how it sounds in real life, but very, very deep and marbly. Huge, huge fan of the overall sound here. But as you heard, the space bar is rather interesting because it is so large and on the heavier side, it doesn't give that full satisfying thock that I was hoping it would. But again, since this is a pre-production unit and this is pretty much double the weight of what the final space bar would be, that's a bit more understandable because it is so heavy. It's just having, you know, less room to fully go down and bounce back up since it's on the heavier side. It's gonna actuate the second you start to press it. 
because that's just gravity, you know? But overall, with the stabilizers, no rattle whatsoever. Super smooth, a crazy unique sound. Now the pricing here I think is really, really fair, especially once you consider the price of plastic keycaps and the crazy price of GMK keycaps. The prices are ranging from 110 to 150 depending on when you buy them. But again, that's a very, very fair price considering these are ceramic versus plastic. Can't emphasize that enough. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below. How do you think this keyboard sounds? Again, it's a mix of a bunch of different materials that really in the end, I think sounds super deep and satisfying with the resin case, palm plate, ceramic keycaps from Syracuse and our lube switches from lube switches, which are the uh, Boba LTs. So a really, really nice complimentary combo here. Unlike anything I've done, super, super thocky and satisfying. Hope y'all enjoyed this one. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope y'all enjoyed. Have a good day.